Welcome back. Um, today we're going to continue doing a bit more stoichiometry, but this time we're going to focus on a concept called limiting reactant or limiting reagent. Now, in order to do this type of problem, I think it might be a bit easier to begin with something that we might be more familiar with. For instance, I think I want to start with my wife's recipe for making fud sauce. Now to make fud sauce, according to Grandma Smith, um, we need for one batch of fud sauce four tablespoons of cocoa, um, two cups of sugar, uh, four tablespoons of flour, some evaporated milk, some butter, and some vanilla. Well, let's not worry about these other ingredients. Let me look at just the cocoa and the sugar. Um, in this recipe, obviously four tablespoons of cocoa would give me enough cocoa to make one batch of fudge sauce. Two cups of sugar would give me enough sugar to make one batch of fudge sauce. Well, I'm going to look in my pantry and I'm going to find out how much of each of these ingredients I have. And as I look, I notice that I have exactly 12 tablespoons of cocoa. And I have exactly 12 cups of sugar. So, how many batches of homemade fud sauce can I make with these ingredients? Once again, assuming I have plenty of the other ingredients um, on hand. So, let's use um, my recipe and the quantities as conversion factors to make batches. So if I have 12 tablespoons of cocoa, isn't it true, according to this conversion factor, that for every four tablespoons of cocoa, I can make one batch of fudge sauce. So, 12 tablespoons of cocoa would allow me to make, let's see, 12 divided by 4, 3 batches of homemade fudge sauce. How many batches could I make with my 12 cups of sugar? Well, let's see. For every two cups of sugar, according to the recipe, I can make one batch of fudge sauce. So this will allow me to make six batches. So, how many can I really make? Can I make three batches or can I make six? Well, it looks like the cocoa is my limiting reagent here. It's going to limit me in the number of batches I can make. Sure, I can make six batches with my sugar, but my cocoa only allows me to make three. So, I can only make three batches. The cocoa in this example was my limiting reagent. Now, the same thing happens in chemical reactions. Let's take a look at example number eight from our notes. In example eight, we have some aluminum wire and some hydrochloric acid. And I want to know how many moles of aluminum chloride I can make with these two reagents or reactants. Now first, as with all stoichiometry problems, we need to write an equation. So here we are going to react aluminum with hydrochloric acid Hopefully you can spot now that this is a single replacement reaction. Hydrogen gas will be produced and aluminum and the chlorides will get together. Remember aluminum has an oxidation number of 3 plus, chloride 1 negative, so we will make AlCl3. Now, stoichiometry is the mathematics of a balanced equation, so we need to balance this. Um, I'm going to put a 6 in front of my HCl here. Now that's going to give me 6 hydrogens on my reactant side. So I can put a 3 in front of the H2 and that will give me 6 hydrogens on my product side. 6 chlorines on my reactant side by putting a 2 in front of AlCl3. I have 6 chlorines here. And then a 2 in front of my aluminum balances my equation quite nicely. Now. I have to do the problem twice, just like I did with my fudge sauce recipe. I did it for each reagent. So let's see. I have 0.75 moles of aluminum and I have 0.8 moles of hydrochloric acid. 
So let's do it first for aluminum to find out how much aluminum chloride I can produce. We'll start with 0.75 moles of aluminum. We will go from moles of aluminum to moles of product. In this case it's my aluminum chloride. Now this ratio comes from the balanced equation. Two aluminums can produce two aluminum chlorides. So with this reactant I can make 0.75 moles of aluminum chloride. Now let's do it again with my hydrochloric acid. I have 0.8 moles of HCl. Now we're going to go from moles of HCl to moles of aluminum chloride. According to my balanced equation for every six HCl's I can produce two aluminum chlorides. So we have 0.8 times 2 divided by 6. Well, let's plug that in quickly and we'll see what we get here. We have 0.8 times 2 divided by 6 will allow me to make, hmm, well, 0.267. We only have one sig fig, so we're going to go with 0.3 moles of aluminum chloride with this reactant. Now remember, I have to pick the one that can produce the least amount of product. So I will only be able to make 0.3 moles of aluminum chloride because my hydrochloric acid is my limiting reagent. Now you'll notice I actually have more hydrochloric acid than I do aluminum in terms of moles. Yet, it's the one that allows me to make the least amount of product. So that's why it is my limiting reagent. So my limiting reagent in this case was the HCl and the amount of aluminum chloride I could produce is 0.3 moles. Alrighty? Now, this next problem is not in your notes. Um, we're going to make this one a little bit more interesting. We're going to use the same reaction, but instead of using moles of each reagent, let's use grams. So, let's say that in my stock room I have 57.3 grams of aluminum and 85.3 grams of hydrochloric acid. How much aluminum chloride could I make with these two reactants? Once again, one of them is going to limit the amount of product I can produce. So, let's do our stoichiometry. We will go from grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum now one mole of aluminum has an atomic mass of 26.98 grams. Then we will go from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum chloride. Now once again that mole ratio comes from the balanced equation and for every two aluminums I can make two aluminum chlorides. So well, let's actually go to grams of aluminum chloride. So let's find out how many grams of this product I can make. So we're going to go from moles of AlCl3 to grams of AlCl3. Now let's find the formula weight of aluminum chloride. So we'll pull out our periodic table. And let's see. We will uh, take the mass of an aluminum, which is 26.98. And we will add that to the mass of three chlorines because the formula is AlCl3. So plus, I'll use my parentheses key here, three times 35.45 grams per mole of chlorine. And let's see what that weight is, 133.33 grams per mole. So 133.3. And we'll go 3, 3. Okay? So, with my 57.3 grams of aluminum, let's see how many grams of aluminum chloride I could produce. So, let's clear a bunch of this here. And we will start with my 57.3 divided by 26.98. I don't need to multiply by 2 and divide by 2. That just, of course, is 1. And we'll multiply by 133.33. So, it looks like I can make, to three significant figures, 283 grams 
of aluminum chloride with this much aluminum. Now that's not my final answer. Remember, my limiting reagent limits the amount of product I can make. So I think the best way to do this is to do this problem twice and pick the smaller answer. So now let's do it with my 85.3 grams of hydrochloric acid. So we'll go from grams of HCl to moles of HCl. One mole of HCl, let's see, we have the mass of a hydrogen, which is 1.01 grams, and a chlorine, which is 35.45 grams, so we end up with 36.46 grams per mole of HCl. Then we'll go from moles of HCl to moles of aluminum chloride, the product I'm after, and that ratio we saw above is a 6 to 2 ratio. And let's go ahead and take this to grams like we did earlier. So we'll go from moles of aluminum chloride to grams of aluminum chloride. One mole is 133.33 grams. So let's see how much this reagent will allow us to make. 85.3 divided by 36.46 times 2 divided by 6 times 133.33 and we end up with 104 grams of aluminum chloride can be produced. Now, which answer do I choose? This reagent allows me to make 283 grams of aluminum chloride. This reagent only allows me to make 104. So the HCl is my limiting uh, reagent in this case, so I have to pick the smaller amount. So I would be able to produce 104 grams of aluminum chloride with this amount of aluminum and this amount of hydrochloric acid reacting. Alrighty, so there you have it. Limiting reactants. Once again, you do the stoichiometry twice and you pick the one that produces the least amount of product. Keep in mind, it is not necessarily the one or the reactant, excuse me, that you have the least of. It is the one that can make the least amount of product. Thank you.